it looks like an absolutely gorgeous day but it is freezing cold don't be fooled by the lovely bright blue skies although i wouldn't say it was that bright it does look quite cloudy the heating's on high and yet outside looks so nice strange good morning everyone happy tuesday how are you all how did your first day going out of the shops go i hope it went okay and i hope it just felt nice to see shops open businesses back open making a bit of money and a little tiny bit of normality i thought i would have been running off to the hairdressers to get this done now <laughs> Sometimes I will do my hair myself. I'm not afraid to do my hair myself. I've done it for years where I've gone blonde and I can put highlights in myself. I can do a root touch up, but I just wasn't feeling the whole let's rush and get my hair done. I actually quite like having roots. <laughs> One thing that does amaze me though is how dark my hair's gone as I've gotten older. That's dark, but I'm just gonna dry it, I'll be right back. And that's my hair dry. The only thing is, it looks very flat when I've got such dark roots, but yeah, it amazes me actually how dark my hair has gone as I've gotten older because I was so fair when I was younger and I'm absolutely loving the office being this way. The only thing is my desk is far too narrow. Well, I've said it about three times. It's actually a dressing table, it's not a desk, so. I'm gonna purchase a new desk. In fact, I'm just gonna get it up now on the computer and show you what desk I'm actually thinking of buying. This is the desk. And it's got this bit here pulls out so I can put my laptop on because as it stands, my laptop, I've got nowhere to put it because the keyboard is here, but obviously I would pull that out and not have it so far away. But you can see everything's just too close this is about this much wider than my current desk and i just love all the storage it's got and i would love to get a white leather style office chair but i can't the transfer of my clothes is shocking so i definitely can't it would have to be a dark one maybe a bit darker than what's on the walls in the gray but that's what I'm getting anyway. I'm going to wait until payday. <laughs> and when I get paid, then I'm going to buy myself that new desk. It's nice and sunny. I'm going to nip up to all that jazz in Stockton Heath to pick up a couple of things. Now, I'm in the process of changing the living room around, as you know. And I know this is going to seem ridiculous when I'm in the process of selling my house. I'm not going to jump into it. There are lots of questions that have been asked like why am i moving why am i selling my house now and why does it choose to move um and i think it needs a whole video but as it stands i'm not prepared to put my house on the market until i've found the perfect house i'm in a very lucky position that i've been mortgage free i've been mortgage free for 11 years it's a long time so i own my house outright so when I sell that, I've also been saving for, oh, where are we? We're in 2021. I've been saving for about four years. So I know I'm in a very, very fortunate position. The point of that was that I don't want to rush and put my house up for sale. I'm confident in the fact that my house will sell pretty quickly and I'm in no chain. It could be a very quick sale if things go the way that I think they will and what I did say to Lee was if this house doesn't come off we are going to wait three years and save for another three years and hopefully not even have to take a mortgage out I know I'm lucky but what you've got to think of is I'm a 43 year old woman and I took a 10 year mortgage out when I took my mortgage out and I was very clever when I done it and I was in a very fortunate position to be able to just take a 10 year mortgage out because we bought our house before the whole boom back in the millennium now I sound like I'm ancient, but you get the gist of it. So until I have anything in writing, I'm still going to go on with the process of buying little things because I'm wanting to change and move away from the grey in my home. The whole stairs and landing and master bedroom is still going to be replastered in the first or second week of May. 
and until I find my dream home I'm not really ready to put my house on the market so as it stands we are going to all that jazz I've seen a couple of pieces that I want to purchase because I've got some nice stands that I purchased online which you're going to see either in this video or in another video but it's going to look very different and I'm going to bring you with me so you can have a little look at the pieces that I'm going to purchase and we will just take it from there I'm going to pick our Mel up because Mel's going to come with me because as you know she's just bought her new place as well and we are going to go and and we are gonna go and have a little look around all that jazz.
I really hope you enjoyed having a little look around all that jazz. They don't have a website, but they do have social media. So I'm going to link their social media in the description box down below and you can message them there. This isn't sponsored or an advert or anything. I have shopped at all that jazz in Stockton Heath for probably around 13 years. It's been a very long time. 13 years easily. It's probably more. It was when they had the little shop over the road and they were in the forge. I was shopping with them then. But it's been a very long time. They're a lovely small business that I love to support. So I will leave the details in the description box down below. You can drop them a message on Instagram or Facebook and they will ship. They ship the mirrors above my bed to Canada. They went everywhere. The mirrors above my bed literally went all over the world and they ship them. They ship all their items. So I will leave all of this I will leave all the details down below for anybody who wants to go and have a look. Their prices are extremely competitive and I will give you a little sneak peek of the purchases that I made when I was there because I'm going for something totally different in my new colour scheme. So yeah, I really hope that you have enjoyed that. My vlogs are all over the place. You'd think after almost a year of posting every week without fail twice a week that I would have some type of routine with regards to how I post my content. I don't. What you need to remember is I have no sense of direction and because I've got no sense of direction I have no sense of where things fall. So I love it when I watch content creators on YouTube and they're so organised with their content and they say, you know, I'll see you all on Tuesday and you'll see that in next Friday's vlog. It's like, how do they know that? How did they work that out? Like, I have no idea. So I just hope for the best. I'm so far ahead with content and with the need to edit that I don't even know what's coming next. I don't even know when you're gonna see this vlog, but I'm pretty sure like I've got to edit Paint Normal's Kitchen, The River of Light in Liverpool, a weekly vlog where I speak about the dangers of an iPhone charger. Um, I've got so much. I've got cleaning videos to edit. I've got sponsored work for next month to edit. I've got so much to do and I'm like that far ahead. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. So I don't know when you're going to see this vlog. I hope it's not too far into the month, but I'm trying to get organised. If you've got any tips on how to be more organised with regards to content on YouTube, I would love it. If you could leave me a comment down below and let me know what you do to stay organised in a way of knowing what's coming up next because I'm clueless with it. Just one more thing as well. Can you recommend any YouTubers to watch because I'm like, I don't know who I can watch anymore. I watch a lot of minimalism videos and Josh and Ryan who are the minimalists. I watch an awful lot of those. I love to watch Yanni and Ewan Olsen who are Swedish vloggers but they vlog in English. Absolutely love them but I've watched all of their videos. I'm completely up to date. But I'm at the point where I'm like, I've got no one else to watch. I don't know who to watch. I love minimalism videos and organising style videos and vlog style videos. So I would love it if you could leave me in the comments down below your favourite people to watch on YouTube so I can have a little look. I'll tell you who else I love to watch. I think she's the only English vlogger that I actually watch. And it is uh, the middle-aged minx, Jill Good. Absolutely love her. And Matilda, her British Bulldog. Absolutely love her. Subscribe to her channel. First video seen, she was wearing a Stella McCartney coat, a blue one, in a hallway. She lives in London. She works for BBC Radio. But lovely, light-hearted, fun vlogs where you watch them and you can't help but come away and feel happy. So if you're looking for someone to watch, I highly recommend The Middle-Aged Minx. She's great fun and just nice light-hearted content that you can't help but smile at and be happy with and yeah so I would love it if you could leave me a recommendation down below of who I can watch on YouTube. This is the middle-aged minx on YouTube now if that's not a dedicated fan who's watched all those videos then I don't know what is there's only a couple that I have missed literally just a couple so today something special is happening we are cleaning the house and preparing it for the estate agents to come out and value our house for it to go on the market so 
I thought I'd pop you there to just quickly tell you we are going to get some new plants for the front of the house. I want to give it the best opportunity to look nice. So I used to have plants outside. They were like spiky palm plants. I'll insert a picture here for you to see them, but that's what we're going to get. So I'm going to bring you along with me to go and get the plants and make the front look a little bit presentable. Hello everybody, nearly done kids, nearly done. I've got 50 minutes before the house, before the estate agents come to value the house. So I'm just gonna clean the front door, clean the windowsills and put the dog's bed away, tidy the garden up a little bit, get the washing off the line and then he's gonna be here to value the house. So, so I was, Peg, stop scratching my feet. She's trying to scratch my feet to get me to sit down. I'm having one of them moments where I am kicking myself because dogs are having a mad half hour because I stripped the whole stairs and landing and to know that the house just isn't at its best right now kind of breaks my little heart but it is what it is I can't change it I just wish I wouldn't have done it but it's done so anyway let's get cleaning and get my house in tip top condition for the estate agents coming to value it. I think the most important thing with a home valuation is curb appeal. So, as you know, I've been off and bought two new topiary trees for outside the front door. I couldn't get the little spiky plants that we had before, but the topiary trees look nice and I can put like little lights in it that will glow up of a night. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure the front of the house looks lovely. Clean the front door and make sure all the front looks really nice and brushed and clean. brushing the garden and there's white feathers all over the garden. I've got one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. That's the remnants of an old one. How many angels have been visiting me anymore? That's the remnants of one there. What do you actually make of that? I don't know what I make of it. I think it's a bit bizarre, but I don't know. A bit weird, isn't it? There's loads. I'm gonna count them again. There are eight white feathers in my garden. Don't know, don't know what to think of it. 
What do you think? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of eight white feathers in my front garden. Tell me, is it a sign? It's 14.07. The estate agent is officially late. He was supposed to be here at two o'clock to value the house and he's not here yet. So I'm still waiting. Does anybody else get like really nervous when things like this go on? I don't know how I feel about it. But I didn't have a very good start to my day anyway because I was pegging the washing house on the line this morning and I'd literally put a towel out and a couple of smaller items and then a magpie flew into the tree. Now the tree is in the garden at the back. I'll spin you around and show you so you know what I mean. This tree. Well, the magpie flew into the tree and had a rat in its beak. It was either a rat or a mouse in its beak. It hung it dead over the branch. I literally flew through the garden because I am terrified of rice. Rice. My saw rats. <laughs> and I'm so scared to go back in the garden. Like, it's traumatised me. We've got a problem with that tree anyway because I don't even know whether you'll be able to see. If I zoom in, the magpies like sit in the tree and where our table is there is bird poo all over the floor it's literally there why can't you see it it's usually clear as day you might be able to see it but i just can't see it through the the viewfinder but they sit in that tree and we end up with bird poo all over the table and within the next two days we've got a lovely fire pit garden set coming which is going to have to be moved over this way a little bit. I can't put the shed over there because the shed has ended up full of bird poo. It's just such a dilemma and I'm terrified of rats and mice anyway. So to see the magpie with one, it's absolutely disgusting. I didn't even know that birds done that. I sent a voice note to our and was like, didn't know the birds done that and he said no they do, especially magpies. Oh. It's absolutely disgusting. But that was a shaky start to my day. After that, I was just stressing about being in the garden and <laughs> a bit flying over and dropping a rat or a mouse. The things that I'm worrying about rather than anything else. And then I'm stressing about waiting for the house to be valued. But when you think of it, I've never been nervous before. I've never had the house valued for it to go up for sale. But I feel so many mixed emotions. One minute I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is going to be amazing. But I think I'm on like an emotional roller coaster because I've gone from being really excited but not letting myself get too excited in case, you know, it doesn't come off for whatever reason to being like, I can't live in this house. I've got a feeling it's just not for me because the lady that owned the house actually passed away in the house. Now, it serves me right for asking the people that we know who live next door I explain this in another vlog, you've probably seen it or it might even be in this vlog. But yeah, the, the lady actually passed away in the house. She was there with her family, it was really peaceful and and I know, you know, lots of people probably pass away at home but I just don't know how I feel about it. I'm just being honest, I don't. And, and I think I even said, you know, back in that vlog, it's not for me. The strangest things... Here's the value. <laughs> The estate agent has just left. Um, he was here for a while. He left just after half past. It's currently 10 to 4. He left about half past 3. And he was so nice, very informative and helpful. And I feel quite positive after... I feel quite positive after him being here and giving us our valuation on the house. And we're happy with it. We're, it's a happy valuation. Um, and with the way that the market is at the moment, we can probably put it on for a little bit more and see how we go. Because there is, I think it's something like supply and demand, but we, we haven't, they haven't, they literally haven't got enough houses on the market at the moment for the amount of demand that there is. So that's why house prices have gone up incredibly over the past few months. But yeah, we got our quote. No, not a quote. <laughs> we got our quote. We got our valuation. Our house has been valued, but I am going to have another estate agent value it just so I've got two valuations and then we'll just take it from there. 
So that's that done, and he literally came when I was telling you about the um, magpie in the tree this morning. That has traumatised me, like nothing has traumatised me before. But anyway, I'm now going to get on with my to-do list because I have a very heavy to-do list, which includes emails. I need to edit one, two, three videos. I've done two videos. I've done a cleaning video, which has already been uploaded to my Tony Interior Power Bank. I've got it wrote on my to-do list. I feel really, really good when I'm, when I'm organised like this. I've filmed the All That Jazz vlog. I now need to film our, the painting of our Mel's Kitchen, my weekly vlog, which I, is part of this one I'm filming now. I think I might be getting a migraine. Am I? I think I'm getting a migraine, guys. I'll be right back. It's a few days later and I am fully recovered from my migraine. I do suffer with ophthalmic migraines. They don't stress me. I just go into an R bedroom, close all the shutters tight and take my medication for migraines and I'm good to go. So I was absolutely fine. The only thing is this vlog has gone on for so long. I didn't realise it was as long as it is. And as I'm editing it, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is well over 30 minutes. So I'm going to cut this vlog off here and say that next week, I'm going to have a little fiddle around with the scheduled uploaded videos on my YouTube and bring you up to speed with what's happening with regards to the house, because I think I did touch on it in this vlog and say that I have no sense of direction. And by that, I mean, I don't have a mindset to be able to think ahead with content for what days are going away. And I really should be more organized, but I have so many things to do that I just don't think about the bigger picture. Like my cleaning video that went live on Easter Sunday, I didn't say no, happy Easter everyone, because I didn't realize that that video was going live on Easter Sunday. It just needs a little bit of work on my behalf. I do YouTube as a hobby, as you know. I should sit down with maybe an hour a week and write down exactly how I'm gonna plan my content, which is what I'm gonna do. So there are things I've spoken about in this vlog where I speak about the property that we were going to view. We, I speak about the lady passing away and speaking about it in the vlog, but it wasn't in this vlog where you've seen it. So I'm gonna upload that vlog on Wednesday where I will fill you in on the property, why we chose not to purchase that house and bring you up to speed with everything else that's going on. I also, paint Fred and um, if you follow me on Instagram you'll have already seen that I have Alberto and Fred they are two bus mannequins and one was very yellow in colour and I've painted it a lovely colour and it's turned out amazing so that's going to be in Wednesday's vlog as well so I'm going to sign this vlog off here thank you everyone for watching please if you did enjoy this video and you found it informative please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. By sharing my videos, it helps YouTube to see that people are interested in my content and shares it out because YouTube are kind of giving me a little bit of a hard time at the moment with how I'm uploading my videos and with 